Welcome back to Bull Sessions here on 680 KFEQ. Got a question that you want Brad to answer on the show? Got an idea for the show? Email the guys at bull at willcross.net. Now, here's Randy Baker and agronomist Brad Law. Okay, Bradley, we're back again. Uh, You was talking about soil fertility, and it is a big deal. It's a big thing. Well, we Uh, want... We're talking about that because we want to grow more bushels. Sure we do. Okay. That's and why we, uh, we we start with that little snapshot in time with that soil test. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did the testing. We sent it in. We got the results back. And then we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. Right. You know, we were talking about lime. And we were saying we want good lime. We don't want crap lime because we could actually make our soil worse by applying the wrong stuff. So we want to have a little bit of a plan and see what's mm-hmm. going on. And, you know, the other day I was listening to Q Country, a sister station of this Sigur 680 KFEQ. Right. And you know what song I heard? I love no, Bradley. Well, I, I remember this song from a kid. Was it ten point or thirty point buck? <laughs> no, it Miles, it was not thirty point buck. I don't think they'll play that. But no. are you going to sing some of that for me? Because you were singing that before we started this segment. <laughs> well, and the thing is, I don't even go deer hunt. I don't even like to go deer hunting that much. So, what does this absolutely have to do with soil fertility? Well, you, you got to follow my train of thought, and it's a it's, it's a crazy train. And Impossible. See, that was an Ozzy Osbourne reference. Digging up bones. Digging up bones okay. is what I was listening to. Okay. okay. We're digging up bones. We're digging deeper in the soil. Mm-hmm. You know, earlier I was talking about, you know, we had a, a six-inch soil test. Mm-hmm. You know, I what I did this spring, and I was doing creative soil tests. I spent about right. 300 and some dollars out of pocket just to play, just to sure. see, to learn and understanding. You know, I, I figured that was tuition to uh, Soil University and mm-hmm. just see what happens. Well, you got to know. Well, and I sent all those soil tests, different labs. And then another thing I did, I pulled a zero to two inch soil sample. I pulled a zero to six, and then I pulled a six to 12 and a 12 to 16 because I got tired of digging down. You are stepping out. I, I stepped 16 out. 16 inches. Because, you know, here's one thing. We've got roots in our plants. Mm-hmm. And they're, let's say they're in that top six inches. But when they go down, you know, I'm hitting higher yields. Okay, so I'm getting results. And we're looking six inches. Well, what's the next step? You know, we've got to keep trying. We've got to keep looking for that next thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't get into uh, products of different crap. But there you go talking dirty again. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. But if stuff doesn't work, I don't like it. I like to look at hardcore stuff in the soil. And uh, we look deeper. You know, and sure. I'm looking at this soil test, and I noticed that the deeper I got, my phosphorus levels went down, you know, mm-hmm. so there's not as many nutrients there. We started looking, and we saw, okay, everything's higher and went slowly going down deeper in the soil. Well, why is that? If we have this awful word called drought, yeah, them roots, or even if we have a thing called, uh, even worse word than drought that they come up with is flash drought, mm-hmm. which meant like in 2014, we had a flash drought, or was it 2013? We had a flash drought. Okay, well, that was like a month of just really dry. I mean, it was almost like a flash drought this year in almost June. Almost like our, yeah, like our you June. You know, it was hot and dry early, and those roots got to dig down in deep. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, what's the what nutrients are down there? What can I use? I want to use all of that acre. I'm not going lateral with more acres, but I'm looking down deeper in those acres. Uh-huh. So what, what is down there? So we pulled down deep, and we saw that. And we saw that, uh, you know, we talked about that. CEC, yeah. you, you talked about that earlier. I did. I knew what that was. You knew what that was. That was cation exchange capacity. Well, we started up at the top on the soil. It was 20 CEC. Then it went down to 22, and we got down to 0 to 6. Then it went down to twenty, almost 25. Then it got down to twenty, almost 28. Well, what that meant was we... The soil got heavier, which is yeah. like I've got clay at my farm. We got some black dirt, then we got some clay under it. Well, the deeper we went, we got more clay content. Mm-hmm. That goes into how we're going to manage that soil, because you know what happens when clay dries out? You got concrete. You got you got yellow gold <laughs> yeah. that ain't worth much, <laughs> uh-uh. unless you're a construction guy and you're trying to build something and need a base. Yes. But, okay, so we're looking at that. You know, what it goes deeper. You know, what's there? And I noticed that uh, that dangled pH, it went from, you know, a nice 6, 7 to it got up to uh, 7.6% when we got deeper. So, you know, high pH, that can cause issues. You know, we mm-hmm. talked about the sure guide. Can. So we said, oh, well, maybe that's why when it gets dry and things aren't looking good, 
you know, what's going on there? How can I get myself through that dry spell when I dig deep? You know, do I do, do I, do I chisel that ground to get nutrients deeper? Do I try banding, which I'm not really thrilled about the idea of banding nutrients, but we can get those nutrients, you know, see what's down there and Mm -hmm. then, okay, then I can process that over the winter. You know, I can think about that, you know, because we've hit like, I'm looking at this old issue from May of 2016 of the Brad's Bull that's in paper. Uh-huh. If somebody wants a copy of this, they can email us at bullwillcross.net. And it says, you know, I had a top yield in a plot of uh, 228 bushel where I pulled those uh, soil tests. Uh-huh. You know, the average on that plot, it averaged 204 bushel, which was is phenomenal that you that's average huge. that. I had a deal, I think it was like 210 bushel would have got you in the top 5 or 10 in that plot, it was a very good awesome. yield for the area. Mm-hmm. You know, very good. Now, what can I do and push that little spot? I encourage everybody, if you've got a spot that you drive by every day and you own that ground, take a spot and try things. You, you mean know? a bad spot or well, a good spot? Or just, just a spot that they like, and you say, well, this spot is bad. I'm going to try this to improve that spot before okay. I go and apply it on all my acres. Or this spot kicks butt. Now, what can I do to get that to the next level? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what's that next step? Oh, I'm going to try putting more potash on. Or I think this spot, you know, I think, well, I, I think it needs more phosphorus. Or maybe I'm going to experiment with micronutrients. Sure. And on those micros, they're not just necessarily a yield in, yield nutrient like the macronutrients are. But those micros are more for a quality. You know, when we're talking about seed beans, we're talking about food production, or if you're, big gr- deal. you know, or if you're growing something for, you know, food grade corn. Any premium market, you've got to have the quality there. Quality. And quality is something that we really can't fix later. We've got to have it from the get-go. Mm-hmm. So, you've got, you know, all of this minerals, everything like, you know, we're made of minerals and all of these things. We need that to have good health in our own bodies. Well, I mean, you got to have it in your soil. It's, it's, I'm just making a, maybe a silly comparison here, well, but th- th- that's not silly <clears throat> because, you know, I told you that I don't follow the land grant university theory of soil sufficiency. I'm more of a balance. I use the algebraic system or if anybody's mm-hmm. heard of Neil Kinsey, mm-hmm. you know, uh, both those have books and you can get them through like acres or Amazon or somewhere. Right. Um, but they use healthy soils grow healthy crops. Yep. Okay, healthy soils, healthy crops. Okay, then we have this thing called the biotic pyramid. We start with the soil, we have the crop, then up above that is man. Yep. We're the top. If we have a nutrient-dense, uh, you know, I like eating cheeseburgers. If we got a cow <laughs> that was fed nutrient-dense corn, we get a better cheeseburger. We get stuff that tastes good. Mm-hmm. How much um, stuff... Do you buy at the store that doesn't taste good? Oh, yeah. You know, or like, why does home raised beef always taste better than box store beef? Always. You know, why does the sweet eggs, corn, milk, you it's know, all. why does Blair's eggs taste better than store eggs? Exactly. Why, why, why does Brad's sweet corn from his patch that the boys are selling taste better than the stuff we got at the store? Exactly. You know, it, it's just, you've got those nutrients packed in there. And it actually, you know, people are caring about what they're doing. And it's not just commercialized and profit. It's about quality. Mm -hmm. Quality is hard. It is. If I might jump in here, guys, uh, you know, you're talking about that. uh, And it reminds me of a phrase that we use around here a lot Uh to talk about our equipment. And the phrase is garbage in, garbage out. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Well, that's perfect, Miles. We we, we talk about a healthy, balanced soil, grow Uh a healthy, balanced crop, healthy, balanced humans. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you're always pulling out some Bible verses, Randy. I do. And, uh, you know, one thing in the Bible, it says we are from dust and we return to dust. Yes. Well, if we return to dust, we're putting those minerals back in the soil. Mm -hmm. So that's something that uh, it makes the whole circle. It it gives a person closure. Yep. So you think the whole whole cycle, and it's not just, oh, let's just apply this. Well, what's that going to do? You know, what is that going to get me to my goal? There's an effect that will come from it. And people can try this. You know, take 10 acres, Mm -hmm. you know, take it or whatever that field is. Say, I want to try to make this field better. Take, you know, either take your worst piece and try to make it better. Look at it. Is it a soil test? You know, a lot of people talk about drainage. You know, when we talk about having a soil full of life, if it is waterlogged, it's anaerobic. Yep. That means there's no air in there. Well, if there's no air in this studio, I'm going to pass out. 
you know, same thing, you know, or if it's too hot like it is in here, you know, that that's going to uh, give us issues in our soil life. It's not going to feed that crop. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all good and well, but like you say, you know, everything, every reaction. Has a reaction. Exactly. It's all got to work together. We got to tie it together. Well, you know, it's like that pulling tractor we talked about earlier. <laughs> you know, we zoop the motor up and then we tear the drive line out of yeah. it. Or, you know, like a diesel pickup. We're you know? spinning our wheels or we're not getting anywhere. You know, I want to pull out on 71 Highway and I want to pass the neighbor when we're hauling cattle up mm. 71 Highway. Mm. Brad, that's illegal. Well, you know how farmers are. I do. They're, they're just big boys and big toys. Okay. You know, I'm and glad then they you said that. They they stomp on that diesel pickup. They want to put her hey, down. Hey, say, well, black maybe, smoke rolling. You know, maybe I get that chip and it feeds more fuel to it. <laughs> well, then they uh, say, well, it just ain't working right. Well, then they need an air box. They need a downpipe and exhaust. You got to get all that, and then you tear the transmission or the clutch out of it. But we have to make this cost effective. You know. Everything has to work together. We got to get the big bushels. This will produce that, but we got to get bigger bushels. You know, and at the end of the year, we start, we look at our soil test. We start looking at, okay, Mm -hmm. do we forecast taxes? Do we see where we're going to be at so we Mm -hmm. keep Uncle Sam out of our pocket? Can we invest, you know, do we invest in equipment? Well, nice shiny paint is awesome, but is it, if we've got decent equipment, do we want to keep upgrading and then, you know, let's, Let's make that soil better with that we're farming and spend right. some of that money on fertility. Mm-hmm. You know, let's work those discounts on prepay for seed. You know, let's get things lined mm-hmm. out and make good decisions. Sure. You got a That's a good point and probably a good way to end this show. Okay. Because uh, we're coming back next well, week. I, I still got more, Randy. I, oh, I know you do. And we will get to it all, but probably in the weeks to come, if Miles don't run us off. You've got a Bible verse I for do. us, don't you? you brought, now that you brought that up, it's uh, Genesis 3, 18, 20. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. I guess that's the end of this show, Brad, and we'll see you next week on another session of Bull Sessions on 680 KFEQ. Thanks for joining us for Bull Sessions, brought to you by Will Cross Seed. Randy and Brad will be back next Saturday morning, tackling more topics from farming to livestock, soil to seed, farm equipment to rural life. So be sure to join us next Saturday morning, same time for Bull Sessions, right here on 680 KFEQ.